One of Mike Tyson's most famous quotes is, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I don't pretend that I react perfectly to every situation when I'm surprised especially, but everyone else is pretty much the same. And that's why it's so important to have the initiative so that you're the one choosing when and how to act and you're keeping everyone else on the back foot. And that applies whether you're approaching someone to be friendly or you're attacking them. You should try to create that confusion and fear and second guessing themselves. And on the other side of the coin, if someone manages to do that to you, they have the initiative. What you need to do as fast as possible is change that so that you either regain control of the situation or you get out of there immediately. I've got a couple of decent examples in this video for you. I'm also playing with a group of three. We've dipped our toes in the water of uh, playing in groups before in the previous episode. We're going to look at it a bit deeper now. And yes, I'm still playing with the same character. And this is the fourth episode, but technically the fifth video that I've made with him. And again, luckily, uh, I was able to record all this on a first-person server as it was pretty decently populated. Now, the first uh, comrade I met up with was Got Shadow. And about two minutes after finding each other, we have our first contact with another player. I hadn't even pressed the record button yet because I definitely wasn't expecting anything to happen in this place. So I missed the first few seconds. But he was chopping a tree down and then someone appears out of nowhere, charges in and knocks him out. This player is then standing over his body trying to punch the shit out of him and I'm fumbling, pressing random buttons. I thought that I'd put my gun away but I hadn't. I hit my record button and this is what happened next. It wasn't me, I promise. <sighs> well I just fucking killed him. Right. Nice one dickhead, what the fuck was that about? I was like next to we move on to meet up with Vanguard, he's in Pogorevka. We get there and meet up and spot another player in that town. Then the server immediately restarted and it goes from night to morning. We want to get into a good position and observe the town in case he spawns back in there. We also want to find out if he's alone or not. So this is the town where we saw the other player. We move around this way trying to find a good spot but we're not successful yet. Once we reach here, Pogorevka is behind a hill and we can't see it. But to our right we actually find that we have a great view over Rogovo. Hmm. Alright, let's, uh, let's, let's watch this town to the right a bit. Oh, I'm just going to stop for a sec anyway. Yeah. Vanguard then notices a contact on the other side of Rogovo. Got Shadow volunteers to go and approach him. Vanguard and I just give some overwatch. By the way, sorry if the other guys sound a bit quiet. I'm trying out some new audio settings. Hey man, what's up? Is he there? No, he's, he's, up, he's, up. he's got a knife. Is he trying to stab you? He's got people in town seat talking to him. He's not answering me at all. Take him, take him. He's crouching. He's oh, he's sitting down, he's sitting down. Just take him, dude, if he's not listening to you. Yep. He's just, he's just baiting time. Hey, I'm not into there. What did he, um, yeah. what did he say, man? Nothing, all I could hear was his ping speak going off, and it was like four or five people. He just didn't say anything. I'll keep my eyes on, dude. I think it was probably a good call, it's the safest one to make. It was a bit too dicey to maintain. If you're logging out, you pretty much deserve that. Interestingly, despite being killed with a headshot, a lot of his gear was already ruined, so he'd probably just come out of another gunfight. We move on and keep trying to get an eye into Pogorevka. Yeah, it's, I, uh, it's really hard to get a look into this town. I've got a um, helicopter. Yeah, see, see. Oh, shit. Definitely get the high ground on that. Um, but we're gonna, we need to give it a wide berth, I think, if we, sh if, if we can move up to the far right away from it. We just, we'll just set up overwatch so one of us can loot it. His mates might be, yeah, that's the direction he was, he was going. His oh, mates yeah. might be up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We might be running right into them. Then. We could, we could be going into a trap. You can only hope. You can only hope. We move to some high ground above the chopper, but along the way we make sure that we can't visibly see it. If we can see the chopper while we're actually moving, then anyone in or around the chopper crash site will also be able to see us. Once we're in a forest just uphill, we start moving down, a couple of us get in position. Once again, Got Shadow is the one who pushes forward to have a look. Turns out the crash site has been picked clean, there's nothing there. We haven't been shot at yet, so it's likely that we're the only ones here at the moment. And I want to find a better spot that's a bit closer so I can lay there and we'll watch the chopper. Of course, if anyone is walking by and they see it, they're going to go straight for it. And we'll see if we can catch them and make a new friend. 
The spot that I choose is this little depression at the top of a crest. It's high enough to see in relatively clear, but at the same time there's some earth behind me, so anyone in the distance to my back isn't actually going to see me. They really need to walk right over the top of that crest behind me and pretty much step on me to see me there. The other two are spread out in different positions off to my right. Someone in the heli, someone in the heli. In the heli, red hikers. Yeah. Yep. Let's take the time. Wait for him to move, I think. Hmm. Is that is that the tail? Yep. Can you take it then if you got him if he's moving. I will. Um. Do you want to try? Oh, what what do they got? What gun? They've got a pink beanie. A pink fucking balaclava. We'll try to track him and have a chat. Just watch what direction they head off in. He's running. He's running towards us. Towards the lake, yeah. Cool. No friends. I'm not seen. Put your gun away. Oh, shadow. Why'd you do that? Did you kill him? He's looking out. Was he? I'm not into this straight away, dude. Straight away, he's not into this. He was looking out. Fuck, dude, you're brutal. You deserve to die for combat logging, but I'm sometimes also inclined to just let people log out, and hopefully you would realise that we were actually not trying to kill him. I don't know what's going through his mind now. He might actually have thought afterward that he made the right decision and should have logged out sooner or something. Before he tried to log, he said something like, don't kill me, I've, I've had this character for over an hour, which is pretty funny to me if you think that's a long time. The next mission was a blind date at the military base under the Vereznik Hill. Since a lot of people tend to take this dry creek bed as a path into and out of the military base, Got Shadow and I get set up in here, and we're going to see if we can intercept someone. Vanguard is set up over there with a good view over the whole area. Once we got there, it turned out this little spot at the intersection isn't so great. You feel kind of exposed and at the same time unable to properly scan the area around you safely. And even if we have warning from Vanguard, it's quite possible that someone could walk up to us and we'll see each other at the same time. We're in there their path, the line that they're going to follow. You really want to see them first and make them doubtful about your exact position. Seems like the chances of an all-out kind of deathmatch scramble for survival is pretty likely here. But we stick around a bit longer and eventually spot someone at the military base. They seem to be walking around there and going prone and just waiting for someone to come by. So we feel that we want to take him out just for doing that. But he won't move and we don't really see him again for a while. Vanguard's probably getting bored, he gets ants in his pants, and he comes up with an idea which is to go down into the base and pretty much run around in circles and try to draw the guy out towards us so that we can take him out. I tell him that's suicidal, but he's not having it. He runs in there and starts doing some circle work. Then even God Shadow gets that tingle in his pants and he starts moving in. I'm gonna run down. You uh, gonna run down? Oh. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Got my magnum out. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead. I was he got sniped. Nah, no, let's, let's back out. Penetration. I was let's go north. That opening. Let's go north, dude. I didn't even hear it. Since we now have other players who we don't know the position of, and they're apparently pretty accurate, we don't know if they've seen me and Got Shadow, but we need to eliminate that possibility. We move out to Cabanino, have a break to eat and discuss things, and we think it's quite possible there could be a sniper sitting on top of the Vereznik Hill. Then we start moving back toward Vanguard's old position, and that should let us get an eye on the hill. But it's possible that the sniper could have killed Vanguard from where we're going to. So as Got Shadow is moving along the road and making sure that the hill is visible, I'm not looking over that way at all, I'm scanning around in the immediate area. God Shadow actually found a piece of paper on the ground here, which means someone has probably unpacked ammunition right on that spot very recently. We hear multiple shots from different weapons coming from the military base, and I'm pretty sure that there isn't anyone hiding around behind us, so I move down to join God Shadow. He spots two players moving up the hill, and apparently they've killed someone. I keep trying to see if I can get a shot on them, but they're very far away, and I don't really have a good idea of the exact range. I'm pretty sure my first shots are going to miss, and then we've lost them. They eventually come down walk past the base and start moving along the creek bed. Let's examine this position we're in right now for a moment. We have a very clear view over a large area. Where I'm laying right now I have pretty much a 180 degree view, but the really bad downside to that is that 180 degrees of the landscape can also see me. This is an issue which is pretty much non-existent on a third person server. Once they start walking through the creek bed, they're closer to me than they were in the mountain, but I'm still not sure about the range. I haven't previously fired test shots from this position to figure it out, and I could have used a map to range find, but maps aren't working for me. I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the new UI. They're just going to get away if we do nothing, so we start firing to hopefully pin them down. It works and they take cover in the creek bed, but I'm still having a lot of trouble zeroing, as I can't really see where my bullets are landing. Ideally, if we had someone over near them, we could have sent them into flank. 
He's looking right at us. Yeah, they're both in there. I can't hit this. I'm firing one more shot and we're going to piss off, alright? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll that, we'll yeah, let's go. That's coming from all over the place. That's not from them. It's just too crazy in there. We've got to leave. Good thing the range is long enough that everyone's having trouble finding their targets. Some of you are probably going to think I'm being really overcautious. Just remember, I've had this character for months now. I've had multiple interactions, friendly interactions, gunfights, and I've survived it all. If you want to do that, you've got to learn to let go when you've lost control of a situation. To recap what just happened, we tried to set ourselves up to intercept someone and hopefully just have a chat and send them off. One of us took a mad risk and it didn't pay off. We were one man down and tried to regain control of the area. That definitely didn't work out. There were probably now multiple groups involved. It was getting very complicated and unpredictable and we pretty much just aborted. And that's about where I ended the session for the night. The next day, I'm meeting up with Vanguard and Boydie and I'm hoping to set a good example of how to loot a military base with a group. It's getting very dark as we move into Starry Sober. We approach from the northern side, come over the hill that's just above the tents, and we clear that area above the tents before moving in at all. Boydie and Vanguard get into position. Then I go in and check the tents, there's not much there. As I start leaving the tents and coming back up the hill towards them, Boydie spots someone coming in from the east. We watch them loot all the tents, and we're trying to figure out if they're alone. He's walking downhill away from us to the barn, and I think, fuck it, let's do this. I'm going to go down and talk to him. Ah, oh, he's going. I think we lost him. No, I don't know where he is. Am I heading? I'm, I should be right behind him, I think. Down towards the barns. Yeah. That's yeah, me. Hello, man. How's it going? Ooh. There's multiples. All oh, multiples there are. Yep. I think they're shooting zombies. Yeah, is it engaging him? Oh god. I'm dead. Now I'm taking off because I thought Boydie would stay on the hill behind me and give Overwatch. So if they'd killed Boydie, they'd obviously figured out where we are. Turns out he's charged down the hill and got there before me and got into a close range gunfight. And after that happened and I backed off, Vanguard then went in. He finds one person running around and he starts talking to him. The other bloke is talking back but he's being pretty aggressive. I come back immediately to give him some backup. Vanguard finds two dead bodies nearby and we figure out that it was a trade kill, both Boydie and one other person is dead. And what we've come across is two people both wearing those medieval helmets. Before we continue, let's slow it down, raise the brightness and contrast and zoom in a bit and figure out what the hell happened. It was very dark and I couldn't see much at all. What it looks like is Boydie is off to the right. These two blokes on the left have a zombie in between them. Anyways, I'm back and Vanguard seeing if we can resolve this peacefully. From this point on at least. He's aiming his gun. He just shot yeah, a zombie, I think. Me, bro. That was zombies, man. Put your gun down. No, we're cool. I'm gonna patch up. Come out, come back out in the open if you if you can bring him out again, just so I can watch he's, him. He's, he's in the light there, mate. Yeah, I can see the. I was bleeding. I'm gonna patch myself up. Let's raise the brightness and contrast here, just so you can see what's happening better. I think he's aiming at you. Where is he, dude? Um, in between me and you, pretty much up the hill in the camo nets. He's not aiming. Now he is. I think he's quite sceptical about... Is he aiming at you? Just I, I can't see him at all. I killed him. He looked like he's aiming at you. Oh, Fuck up. him. Okay, let's analyse what just happened. The biggest mistake there wasn't the fact that Boydie ran in in front of me. It was the fact that I never specifically told him to stay there while I went down. I just assumed that he would do that. So at the end of the day, I really should take the blame for that interaction not working out. If he communicated that he was moving in, I would have said something, but 
that's not good enough really. I do think there was a semi-decent chance that after I said hello they would have been okay but under any circumstances if you see someone sneaking up on you in the dark and saying nothing and they've got a gun what are you going to do? I don't blame them for shooting first at all. Apparently the second one was trying to get Vanguard to loot Bordy's body, and that's a pretty obvious ploy to make him stand still so he can shoot him. I understand that as well, he wants to get revenge for his friend just getting shot. Besides that, I hope you can see the value in having most of your group staying hidden. You need to hide as much from people as possible, even if you're trying to be friendly. That worked both ways in this instance. We had a great advantage in the beginning being completely hidden and knowing where one of them was but they had this card up their sleeve and that there were two of them and then it flipped back the other way where we had total control we could choose what happened unfortunately they decided they wanted to continue to fight the opposite approach to that last example would be just to go balls to the wall with intimidation but you need more like a five to one kind of ratio to do that and even then it might not work i have an old series of catch and release videos where i work with quite a large squad to do that if you want to check it out the fact that it is so damn hard to survive encounters with other players is to me what makes this the most intense and interesting game I've ever played. Four times in this video I've tried unsuccessfully to just have a friendly interaction, but that just means that when it does work out, it feels even better. And this is why I have no sympathy for people who complain about KOS and say that they walk up to people and try to be friendly and get shot every time. As far as I'm concerned, you just need to get better at the game. Sorry if that sounds a bit harsh, but it's how I see it. I'm going to make an addendum to this video. And it'll just show me, Vanguard and Boydy, looting these same tents again after server restart. Nothing actually happens, I'll tell you now. But I just thought some of you might be interested to see us go through the whole thing uh, without any interruption, without any voiceover. And you can see the method that we use in more detail. It's not perfect and there are still things there that I would like to improve. But as I said, I thought some of you might be uh, interested to see that. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.